you I come back. This is Unit uh, 5, Part 2, with me, your Professor Neil, and our TA Yonghi. And we're going back to grammar to begin this Part 2. And we're going back to the adjective section to look at adjective order. So here you can see at the bottom, it says, It was a beautiful, small, square, brown, Swedish plastic coffee table. So we are following a particular way to look at the uh, describing the noun. So these follow a subject, verb, sometimes preposition, determiner, adjective, as many as you like, and noun. So for example... Here on the left, Yonghi, we have some objects. Do you know what the first one is? Mm, that is uh, oak. Brown oak desk. Okay. Brown oak desk. Yonghi is good at this. Yes, yeah, quite a lot of descriptions. So first, we have to give it a subject. It's a desk. It's a desk. All right. So it is a beautiful, large, square, brown, Italian, wooden office desk. So you see, we've taken... Impression, beautiful. Size, large. Shape, square. Color, brown. Origin, Italian. Material, wooden. Qualifier, office. And we'll talk about qualifier in a moment. And then the next one is a coffee pot. It is a nice, large, round, orange, Swedish, metal, camping coffee pot. So this one is a coffee pot. So notice here we're following the same pattern that they gave before. It is, and we're going to look at the attributive next. So it is an old, medium-sized, because notice here it had size, small, large. Well, if you ever go to McDonald's and you don't want a small Coca-Cola and you don't want a large Coca-Cola, you ask for a medium-sized Coca-Cola. And then colour brown, origin British, wooden, home, rocking chair. So that follows the example in the book. But if you notice here, in a click, click of the mouse, office, camping, home have now changed to green colour. Because technically, these are not adjectives. They are called attributive nouns. Attributive nouns. And the reason they don't play as adjectives is because they don't follow every adjective rule. So they should follow both the attributive and the predicative, but they don't follow both rules. So for example, the reason why coffee and dinner qualifiers are not proper nouns is because they do not follow this subject verb adjective predictive pattern. So for example, the desk is beautiful. The desk is large, the desk is square, the desk is brown, the desk is Italian, the desk is wooden, the desk is office, the desk is office. Yongi, yes, no? The coffee pot is camping. The rocking chair is home. Strange. Strange. No. You cannot use these in this sentence pattern. All right? They have to move place because technically they are attributive nouns. But not, they are noun. They are technically a noun, not an adjective. So they have to move. So let's change it again. So it should be the office desk is beautiful, large, square, brown, Italian and wooden. Now office is in the right place. So this qualifier worked in the first example but does not work in this subject verb adjective form. So when you're using it it's, and the noun is at the end of the sentence, then it's okay. But now the noun is at the beginning in the subject bit and these qualifiers cannot come after the verb. So Yongi, is this one okay? Yes, so these are uh, compound noun. Compound noun. So two noun or three noun get together become one unit of noun. Have a noun party. <laughs> Have a noun party. Oh, so much fun. I love that. So like uh, uh, Young He Neil. 
Yeah, what a party. What a party. <gasps> so, pay attention. These qualifiers, the book is not does not explain it. That's the point. The book shows you but doesn't explain it. Hopefully, in this brief introduction, we've explained to you that these qualifiers have their different rules. So, qualifier gives that noun special function. So, there are table, many tables in the world. But the one I'm looking at is coffee table. The one I'm looking at is a dinner table. Mm. There are many tables in the world. So study these sentence patterns, practice them, and if you have any questions, in the comments below, mm. or message us. Let's practice it. So Yong Hee is going to give you the answers here. Will they say answers? Yes, answers. So if you don't, if you haven't done the exercise, do the exercise. Finish the exercise and then come back to this part of the video for Yonghee's answers. Yonghee, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. All right, so number one. So you have to get the sentence order correct, the correct order. So we have to do impression first. So she has beautiful brown hair. Yay, one fish. Mm. Oh. If I get all right, can, can I get eight fish? Yes, eight imaginary fish are all yours. Real, real fish. fish, sorry, real fish. Real fish. <laughs> if a Professor Neil, if we can't give real fish, why do I have to get the answers correct? Oh, okay, well, that's your choice. It's like, uh, to me, fish is the uh, same as the students uh, getting a good school. Okay, Yonghee, can we do number two, please? There are some fresh cherry tomatoes in the refrigerator. Beautiful. All right. Number three. He speaks two uh, foreign European languages. Oh. Uh, there are five talented basketball players on the other team because basketball players are compound now. Mm -hmm. Because you can't say he is basketball. Mm. No, strange. Number five, they bought a large white TV stand. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, I got it right. Five fish. Number six, he was wearing an ugly orange cotton sweater. Oh, doing very well. Because we have to get the material at the last position okay, well, of um, adjective. Let's put a bit of pressure on you. If you get number seven or eight wrong, you lose all your fish. You didn't say that, <sighs> Professor Neil. Why is sudden twist of game coming? Professor to... rules. Oh, very unfair. He's my professor is ugly, <laughs> orange, human person. Okay, I'm Trump's son. <laughs> number seven. We have a sharp steel carving knife Wait. in the drawer. Ooh. Oh, Yonghi, but you can still get one more fish. <laughs> Yonghi, disappointed. Isn't it carving afterwards? Oh, let's check. Let's check. Okay, Professor Neil. Carving knife is the um, compound now. There's uh, many different types of knife. Carving knife, uh, cooking knife, and eating knife. Well spotted, Yonghe. You saw it. And so, there so was a uh, cherry should be green. Oh, oh you oh. changed the green. And European. Should... European is adjective. Mm -hmm. It's not Europe. It's European language. Yes. Like British person. Okay, so yes, let's go for number eight. Professor Neil, you have to give me double fish. No, that was not the rules. No, Professor rules. <sighs> number eight. I'll give you nine fish if you get number eight. One more fish? Mm hmm. Mm, okay. Bonus fish. Bonus fish. Uh, number eight. There was a scary long green snake in my yard. Yay! <laughs> Very good, very good. I I'm think I'm very good at this. Looks, looks like I'm going to have to go and buy some frozen fish. Nine fish. Nine fish. Well done, Yonghee. All right, well, that's sentence order. 
Let's go and practice this now. Let's practice. Practice makes perfect. Let's practice in speaking one. Here we go to speaking one. So adjectives coming up. So take turns describing the objects in the pictures. Use at least two adjectives for each one with help from the box. Right, it's for example, it's a small red rubber ball. They are expensive diamond earrings. So here are our adjectives, and we've talked about qualifiers, and you can see the order they should follow. So let's try talking about some of these. So for example, Young Hee. Oh well, let's. I'm I'm going to throw them up. So. For example, it is. You say if it's correct or not, Yonghee. You just say if you're happy with the description of the watch, puppies, car, boxes, shoes, and dress. So, for example, here are our actors. Oops, Oop, too fast. It is a shiny watch, cute puppies, expensive car, new boxes, and so on. All right, so let's just have them come up. Okay, so it is a shiny gold Swiss watch. Are you happy with that?、Mm, Professor Neil, is a gold noun? It's a color too. Okay, yeah, it's color. So、mm -hmm. color can be both noun and adjective. Because、yeah. this is why it's difficult. Because、mm -hmm. uh, English is not my mother tongue,、okay. so it's、so、confusing. But that's why I wanted to check. Yeah, they are、uh, cute brown puppies. Ah,、uh, Swiss here is used as、uh, adjective.、Mm -hmm. So Swiss、uh, noun means Switzerland. Yes. Okay, Swiss is、uh, yes. adjective. Okay, and they are cute brown puppies.、Mm, they are cute brown puppies. It is an expensive red racing car. It is racing car, not the、uh, electronic car. And、uh, they are new blue boxes.、Mm -hmm. They are shiny white ballet shoes. It is a new green summer dress. Yeah, it's a summer dress. It's not winter dress. It will be freezing. Yes. So here, for example, you can say the summer dress is new and green. So they said to use more than two. All right. The racing car is expensive and red. The cute puppies are brown. The shiny ballet shoes are white. The shiny gold watch is Swiss. The blue boxes are new. However, we mentioned the qualifiers. So what you here, what you can't do is this: the new dress is summer and green. The expensive car is red, is racing and red. The shiny white shoes are ballet. So here, those qualifiers cannot fit in this sentence pattern. These are wrong. They are wrong. You have to say the new dress is green. That is okay. Right. The expensive car is. Are the, sorry, the shiny white shoes are. Right. So here, you have to remove those qualifiers. So, for example, the shiny white shoes are ballet shoes. That is okay. Right. The expensive red car is racing. A racing car. The new green dress is a summer dress. So you have to make adjustments. Right. If you use the be verb, you have to be careful to make sure they are either followed by a noun phrase after the be verb, or an adjective by itself. So there you go. That's using adjectives to describe objects, and we're going to ask you to practice some of that in the homework. For now, we're going to look at speaking two. Speaking two. Oh, no music. Ah,、uh, there's piano music. <laughs> There's piano music. Yeah, still rain for it. So five senses. So here we're talking about the senses. Senses. Youngie, what are the five senses? Five senses are something like、uh, 
taste, taste, uh, touch, and smell,、mm-hmm. and hearing,、mm-hmm. and seeing, seeing, and taste, hearing, seeing, touching, and ah, pain. Pain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There are five senses. Yes. Isn't it? Yep.、Yeah. So look at the question here. The question is like, how does the cake taste? Does is an auxiliary verb here. It tastes sweet. All right, we got our predicative、uh, verb. So you can say it tastes sweet, like it is sweet, or it looks sweet, or it tastes sweet. So here you got words like look, taste, sound, right, to describe the function related to the sense. And if there's more than one, it's they. How do the flowers smell? They smell wonderful. So Yonghee, some questions for you.、Mm-hmm. Let's go with the answer. How does the sunset look? Ah,、uh, the sunset looks beautiful. Very good. And let's try the painting. How does the painting look?、Mm, the painting looks、uh, strange.、Mm-hmm. According to the book, and how about peppers?、Mm. How do the peppers taste? The pepper tastes spicy. You're not joking. You're not joking. Peppers can taste really spicy. Bring tears to my eyes. So, it can be painful. Yes, can be painful. You could see. You could also say it looks beautiful. It looks strange. They taste spicy. Are you sure that you can change it to? The sunset becomes it. The painting becomes it. The peppers become they, because the peppers is plural. Can I say the peppers taste painful? Yes, the pe- well, it'd be a bit strange, but、yeah. anything is possible in language. Here comes classroom activity. Classroom activity, and we're going to do quite a bit of that. So here, match the people's situations with their associated feelings. So Yonghee. Can you match number one? Joan has an important test tomorrow. What would be her feeling?、Mm, nervous. Oh, very good. Travis just had a car accident.、Mm, shocked. Shocked. Yes. Marcus got a new motorcycle today. Ooh, excited! Excited. I can relate to that. Laura lost her cat yesterday.、Mm, sad. Don't lose cat, people. Okay, Stanley ate too much for dinner. Mmm, full, full. And Edith got forgot to bring a present to the party. Ah,、oh, embarrassed. Okay, so Youngie, you think you can remember these? Possibly. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, ask your partner the question. So, who feels shocked? Mmm. Jo- Join. That's just Travis. Travis. He just had a car accident. I have to remember their name. Yes.、Uh, difficult. Oh, very difficult. Who feels embarrassed? I don't remember her name. <laughs> Edith. She forgot to bring a present.、Mm. Joan feels nervous. She has an important test tomorrow. And we'll leave the rest. Oh, sorry. We'll leave the rest for you to do. In the book,、uh, I have to go back to book again、yes. to check their name. We got the other six who are at the back of the book. So Akbar worked sixteen hours today. Oh, he must be tired, exhausted. Oh, very. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an A plus. Must be proud. You can be proud to if you work sixteen hours. Yes, I, I've done that. I've done longer. Quinton lost his cell phone. Uh. Angry, disappointed. Yeah, we should point out Yonghee has worked over fifty hours straight, <laughs> so sixteen hours is nothing.、Mm. Professor Ni, are you exploiting me? Yes, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> Edie can't go outside because it's raining. Ah.、Uh, oh, Eddie, Eddie. What was it, Edie? Bored.、Uh, angry. Right, bored. Bored. No, no, is angry because she didn't get her salary on time. Ah,、uh, that's really, really bad. Yeah. We all want our salary on time. Yeah. So as we said, Eddie feels bored. He can't go outside. 
Nora feels angry she didn't get her salary. Christine feels surprised she got flowers without a name cut. Card. And the fellow Akbar feels exhausted because he he has worked 16 hours. But we'll leave those for you to do. As with the one feels proud and feels disappointed because we are moving on. We are moving on. Moving on, moving on. We are moving on to the end. Listening. Listening. Right. So there's wow. the band again. From the part one. Yes. But now we're going to replace with piano music. Mm -hmm. So first, listen. All right. We are going to read the dialogue. So here we go. One moment and we'll read. Hi, Rick. We're excited to hear about the Midvale Rock Festival. Sure are. I was there last weekend and it was amazing. Who were some of the bands? I saw White Riot, the Rock Raiders and Easy Grant. There were also a lot of really talented local bands from Midvale too. What were some of the festival highlights? Ah, uh, on the festival's opening night there was a fireworks show. Classic rock music played in time with the fireworks explosions. Was anything else really special? Ah uh, yes, on closing night there was a surprise performance by Ray Leonard. He played many of his famous songs. The crowd loved the show. The whole festival was a big success. It sounds like everyone had fun. Thanks for visiting to tell us about the Midvale Rock Festival. No problem, Alan. I'm always glad to talk with you. Very good. So if you need to listen to it again, rewind the video. So now, we are going to give you the answers. Here we go, answers. So Yongi, which festival did Rick attend? A rock festival. Good. Oh, where, oh, sorry, so wait, 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 Professor Neil, my voice is strange. Okay. Oh. You need your voice back. <laughs> when, when did Rick attend the festival? Uh, he attended the festival... I can't know. I don't know. Mm. Is it? Is there any hint? Ah, here. Ah, last weekend. What did Rick think about the local bands? Mm, they are talented. Mm -hmm. What happened on the festival's opening night? Fireworks event. Oh, very good. Who is Ray Leonard? Uh, a musician. Mm -hmm. And how was the festival? It was enjoyable. It was enjoyable. Very Ooh, nice. Finally, I got my voice back. Thank you, Yonghe. Thank you. All right, so yeah. Moving, moving on, moving on. Okay. Yonghe is a musician. Head banging, bong, bong, Lastly, lastly, bong, 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 bong. Reading and Final section. Reading and writing. So here's the reading. Read the description about the German festival, then write an interesting festival in your country. Use the questions to help you get started. So first, as it says, reading. So I'm going to read for you. Every year, more than 6 million people gather in Munich, Germany for Oktoberfest. The festival started in the early 19th century. It features amusement rides, street stalls and traditional foods. One of the main attractions is the Oktoberfest, beer. Together, the visitors drink over 7 million litres of beer during the festival, and they usually drink it from large glass mugs called steins. Even though the visitor drink, visitors drink a lot of alcohol, the event is fun for families. Everyone can enjoy Oktoberfest. The festival begins on Saturday with a long line of huge horses. They pull the festival's many tents into place. Street vendors sell traditional German foods, souvenirs and various crafts. The Oktoberfest celebrations in Munich are very special. The festival usually lasts 16 to 18 days each full. Wow, wow. Professor Neil, you sound very happy when you mention about beer. <laughs> yes, good thing I've stopped drinking Fine beer for, a few, for the semester. Right, what is an important festival in your country? My country is England. And when did it start? And what special activities does it involve? Who joins the festival? 
and when is it usually held? So here is my example. Every year thousands of people gather in Pilton, Somerset in England for the Glastonbury Music Festival. The festival started in 1970. It features live music performances. People of all ages come to the festival to listen to great music, drink beer and have fun. It is held in June every year. It lasts four days. So you can use this example and you should only really have to change the green or orange parts. You might have to change uh, to listen as well. Right? But most of it you don't have to change. So, if, But Yonghi, how about you? What is a important festival in your country? Mm, I don't know everything in my country, but I know one important uh, festival in Busan. Every year, thousands of people gather in Busan in South Korea for the Busan International Film Festival. The festival started in 1997. It features uh, lots of uh, feature movie around the world. From Pe around the world. From around the world. People of all ages come to the festival to watch great movie, drink soju, <laughs> and, and have fun. It is held in October every year. It lasts for uh, 14 days. Wow, very good. Very good. So yes, the Busan International Film Festival is a good choice of an important festival in your country. Thank you, Yonghee. That was excellent. So that is pretty much the end of this unit. We have grammar review. And grammar review is self-study. So if you need to practice, go through the self-study sections and check your answers with the back of the book. For now, thank you for joining me, your Professor Neil, and my TA, Yonghi. Wow, that was uh, difficult, but great fun. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye, see you in Unit 6.